You're a part of M1. Millions of dollars made, people all over the world watching. You're the first white kid in the M1 legacy. All these heights, but who, who is this dude? You immediately are thrown in with literally the biggest street ball celebrities in the world. Some of them dudes is wild. Yeah, they all wild. Yeah, they all <laughs> okay, wild. so and one was all fun games, girls, clubs. You do think about God. Actually, no, you don't. didn't. We're yeah. about to launch Ball Up, the second coming of And One. And we trying to go big and then escalate, pass away. Yo. And so then my world kind of halted, but it forced me to ask like bigger questions of yep. life, right? For the first time, really. And you don't have to say no names, but did yep. people have come to you afterward? Like, did they ask you for advice or was it like too much ego, too much pride? <sighs> we still beefing today. This is The Deep End with LaCroix. So I'm not gonna do what everybody else does, cause I don't. I don't want to. I don't want the whole. Let's get it out the way first of all. Okay, so this is we gonna get out the way. We are gonna get out the way. Let's get it. You psh, and one. Okay, if anybody who doesn't know what and one is, it was like the the street ball bible in terms of like watching street ball on television. You were part of and one. Millions of dollars made. You murdered it. You killed it. You did an amazing job. You rose to new heights. Everybody loved you. Well, not everybody. Not everybody. That's true. <laughs> then M1 folds. It's a sad story. Everybody's frustrated by it. There's all kind of mixed feelings about it. You went through some hardship, but then you turned it around mm -hmm. and became the first basketball influencer on the internet. Like a million followers in freaking what a week or overnight or something crazy yeah. like that <laughs> so all these heights you did all this stuff we know that but who who is this dude you know what i'm saying <laughs> so for me i'm like i'm mesmerized because we we watch a lot of elite athletes people entertainers so on and so yeah. forth like people look at me and i'm like oh wow how did you do that how did you get here but a lot of times you don't understand like the backstory and like yeah. what created that person so right. i've heard you say like you were getting trained in like elementary school and so on yeah. and so forth the birth for basketball like what what happened how yeah. did that happen so my pops actually put a basketball in my hands at two years old yeah so I'm already like shooting on the Larry Bird Nerf hoop. It's funny. I've just seen LeBron. He had the same Nerf hoop. Like in the same, we're the same age, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm actually a little older, but anyway, fourth grade, my dad was just tapped in. Like, like he loved basketball and his passion wore off onto me at a really young age. Yeah. And I actually never even, I don't even know if we've, I've even actually asked him like, why did you go do this? That's but what I was wondering. Yeah. He did the most genius thing ever. Yeah. When got me a skills trainer when there was no, we weren't even calling skills. That wasn't a word. It was just my trainer. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But he was, he was skill training. And I think we met him. I went to a basketball camp. Okay. And my dad was impressed by him. Uh, this guy named Rodney Howard is, he's cool, man. He, he roomed with Gary Payton at OSU. Oh, so he was a baller baller. He's only five, seven though. Okay. Like, like a light five, seven, you know what yeah. I mean? So I could relate on certain levels like even when i went to the camp he's like i'm like this dude's my hero right here he's dunking you know what i mean but he was also just great at like explaining footwork you know okay. moves off the dribble so did your dad love basketball loves basketball yeah so he was he a hooper or he just he's a hooper yeah like i couldn't even beat my dad until i was like a senior in high school okay so he really could ball he's a hooper yeah but he, he didn't play like college or pro because it, it was a different era right he didn't even think about it, right it, it yeah. was like his my grandpa, his dad was like old school. It was like, get out of the house at 18. Okay. Go get a job, figure it out. So like he started yeah. working in the jewelry business, which was our family business or whatever. Okay. But yeah, he loved the game. And my parents, they're, they're the reason I do this now, right? They put the camp, had the camps. We had the trainer at fourth grade. I'm like the kids now, low key, like ahead of the game. That's what I'm saying. Like what was, <laughs> yeah. in my brain, I'm like, yo, what were your parents thinking? Like, that's kind of crazy. What? So what was what was like your relationship like with your dad? Like was it were y'all like bosom buddies or was it, you know, did you feel forced or was this all love? You wanted to do this. Wanted to do it, okay. never was forced. Okay. We're okay. all basketball. Yeah. But that's funny, right? Because it could could have went the other way. Everybody's different. Yeah. But I think it was just like, I mean, it was just it's, it's God's plan. This is the yeah. way it's supposed to happen. Cause a lot of things were like, 
I think my parents knew they were making the right moves by getting me a bunch of practice, but not doing only doing it perfect. Okay. <laughs> Either doing it just right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even in my hometown, doing a crossover is a show off move growing up. That's yeah. like in conventional when we get to the the team like the game right. and the season yeah you're not gonna do that the coach isn't gonna trust nobody to do that because nobody does that he didn't grow up seeing that it's right. all, it's new it's in the nba it's new in the nba right we only yeah. knew tim hardaway yeah. right and that was real like in tight and and like we don't have the athletes like that so yeah. anyway but this this trainer first couple moves taught me in and out Okay. In and out cross. They taught me the AI cross. And like, but I kept learning these moves in like a week, you know, yeah. but all I do is hoop. So I don't know how many reps I'm getting in, on the week. Yeah. But I'm like this tall, I'm four foot, whatever, three foot, whatever. But I can cross like grown adults with that, that cross. What was the plan though? Like, what, what, <laughs> like, is your dad just like, oh, this will be cool. Like, we want him to get better. Or did he think like he needs to make varsity or like, what was, like, what was the goal? It was just, Leisure, just for fun? I mean, in my mind, we're going to the league, man. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. So you, so you was thinking you was going to the league. Okay. You know what's funny? I was on a bench in college playing two minutes a game, or if the game's club, I wouldn't even go in. But yeah. I was still going to the league, though, in my I, mind. I feel you. you no, know, I play, I play high school ball. I felt that. I play high school ball. My coach said this to me, and it, it rocked me. He said, that? He said, I've coached some great players, and I've coached some good players. The great players – went on to play professionally. None of y'all are great. And I was like, dang. That's a tough one. Stunk, but, it, but it hit me with that dose of reality, though. Yeah, I remember, it's funny you say that. I was just telling somebody the other day, that same, my community college, which I barely made the team, got cut from three community colleges before yeah. that. I remember my coach, he went down the line, he evaluated. We lost like five games, so he had to chew out everybody, one to 12. Yeah. Mind you, I'm down there, 12. Curses out everybody. We had like a Bobby Knight style coach. Yeah. Literally cursed out everybody. Called us little B's and H's and F's and all this. And he get, he get to me. He got down there in the end. I was standing with this other walk on. This guy named Joe. He was like, he was like, and Grayson and Joe. <laughs> he's, a, he's like, F. He's like, <laughs> I don't even care if y'all come back, man. Go do something else. Dang. Real talk. He didn't mean it because we're in practice, but like. Yeah. But he also meant it, right? He's like, I ain't even got words for y'all. Like, come on, man. <laughs> but oh, that was the old school, right? That's the old school coaching. Now, that that's really interesting. You know what else is interesting? Is ad-free content. Like, not having this interview interrupted by ads. And that's what I believe you want. The way that happens is by you subscribing to B-Side, where you will get seamless ad-free content and you'll be able to enjoy this interview along with tons of others without any interruptions. It's funny to me because you you from Oregon, right? That's not like the mecca of basketball or street ball for that matter. Period. So you coming up fundamentals, Oregon trainer. I know your trainer ain't teaching you all the extras, the crazy stuff. I'm curious, like, because... Yeah. Because when, when I saw you the first time, because I remember I was the kid who went to, was it Foot Locker, Foot Action? Yep. Yeah. Foot Action was first. Foot, foot Action. I went to Foot Action just to get the And One mixtapes to watch the whole, like I was locked in. And when I saw you, I was like, this dude got to be from the hood somewhere, like oh. just understood the culture, <laughs> the haircut, the whole nine. So, like, wh how did the influence, like, was it hip-hop? Like, how did the influence come about? Yeah. Like, Yeah, it's funny because, like, you learn a lot in retrospect. Like, yeah. I at that time, I wouldn't know that you would think that, right? Uh. So, growing up, I was just a fan of, like, hip-hop and, like, like people in my hometown listen to alternative music, yeah. rock music, right? Even when I got on N one my high school teammates, or, sorry, my high school peers, I would say only... 20% of them even knew what Anwan was or what I was doing at the time. And wow. we're only we're only one year removed from like I played one year community college yeah. and then I got on and one. So I didn't they didn't even know what that was. Like that's the difference of the culture. So I was a fan of hip hop as an outcast. Okay. Right? Yep. I had a Caesar cut as a white dude because I'm trying to be like skip to my Lou. So so <laughs> one was really like influenced. Yeah, I was a fan like, before I was even on the team. Yeah. That's and remember, crazy. you know, it started. The Anwa Mixtape Volume 1, I think, came out, like, actually in 1998. Yeah. No, yeah. it was... And then it, it really... 
it buzzed hard, but like it was so underground. Yeah. And then by about 2000, 2001, it's like that tape has circulated, but now they got volume two and three. Yeah. And then by the time it goes to ESPN, it's like it's over. Right? So are you that kid <laughs> who's in his room? You just watching these tapes religiously trying to moves out. Yeah. Like that's that's your life. Yep. Okay. Yep, and I in the NBA, I was grew up off Jordan, you know. Yeah, born eighty. You're just ahead of me, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. And then um, Iverson was my first player that I actually like emulated. Okay. But I was actually some people were so an and one, but they actually couldn't hoop though. They were just into the tricks, right? Yep. So, but I actually like play play, play so ball. I could go straight fundamentals. We don't like even today, right? I read com some comments. They're like, bro, just close your legs, you guard them every time, watch the hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not not knowing it's way more to it, and like. I choose to do them. If I do a move, it's borderline illegal, which yeah. I still I actually tried to be legal 90% everything. Right. Uh, it's by choice. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, yeah, back in the day, yeah, I was just a huge fan of Iverson, Hot Sauce, Skip to My Lou, AO, Headache, okay. Ali Mo. These were my guys. So, if you, so this <laughs> was crazy to me, right? All yeah. right. So, you're watching all of them. This is like the equivalent of me. Like, I grew up loving hip-hop music, and then the first time I did the BET Cypher, and then I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm in here with the people that I grew up watching. You know what I mean? So I'm just thinking of- I think I've seen that, too. I yeah, think I, think I saw so it. So I'm thinking yeah. of your brain, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Because they, so they do the, they do the, the tryouts, right? So mm -hmm. you go, they, mm -hmm. like, where was it at? Portland, or where was it at? Portland. In Portland. So yeah. they do the tryouts. Mm -hmm. You go to the tryouts. What, are you, what is your brain thinking? Like, are you nervous? Are you like you know excited? It's crazy? Sometimes I get nervous. Sometimes I would get nervous at the idea of, oh, I'm about to do this. But when I step in the lines, I'm never nervous. Okay, even today I'm never so nervous. So you seeing hot sauce? You seeing Ali? You seeing all these people? Are you fanning out, or are you just like I'm about to get busy? Oh, so what happened was, it's both. It's both. So okay. so I actually didn't know that I'd ever actually face them. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like you go to the event, you might play. A lot of people play in that open run just to swag out, right? You, yeah. You're there on the day, get a couple moves off. You know what I mean? Whatever. Right. You're not really like. And even me, I actually didn't think they'd sign a white dude from Oregon. Like I didn't think I even belonged. Yeah. I actually, my whole career up until my late 20s, I'm always learning how good I actually am. Mm. I never, didn't have nobody to affirm it that had already did it. Like mm. I met. I even met an NBA player in 2012, and he thought I was better than I even thought it was in 2012. Yeah. Right? And one ended like 08. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, I started playing NBA players, and I'm like, oh, this dude can't guard me. Like, I never, well, I didn't know that. Nobody told me. You know what I mean? So you, because you hadn't seen, <laughs> you hadn't seen it matched up. And so you didn't know. But what's crazy to me is I think that's a lot of our story is that it takes community to kind of affirm the gifts that you have. Like, you don't know. The, the the gifting that you have without someone else like affirming that in you. You need so, a mentor. Also, like going to the league, right? Yeah. You're, you're trying to make the league. You need yeah. a mentor who made the league. Even even if he just got a workout, even yep. if he had a 10 day, yep. that's gonna make all the difference in the world because he's gonna be able to like evaluate your talent a lot more realistic. Cause yeah. you can get the unrealistic evaluations that are too high or yeah. too or too low, right? People got egos or politics or whatever. Right. You know, the new generations, they don't understand how big and one was. So I yeah. I'm, I try to paint the picture for people. Like there's there's mainstream hip hop. There's like Drake and there's Kendrick and all of them. But then there's like the rappers that are not mainstream, but people love. They have like diehard fan bases. It's kind of like how people viewed Travis Scott before he blew up. And that's what M1 was. It was like the biggest thing out there, especially for like kids in the younger generation. It was underground. It was like this thing that was, it was like social media. You know what I mean? So. I think once it hit ESPN, it, oh, it was like clicked to mainstream, the, but we didn't evaluate it that way still, right? Because like yeah. the NBA is the mainstream of basketball. Exactly. So so <laughs> you dove into that, like not knowing, and this is the crazy thing. So I, I have a lot of like, I have a couple young artists. So I remember taking my guy, 1K Few, who, you know, I signed, he was young. And he goes on my run with me, like my tour and to some of the events and stuff. And immediately, I mean, he's meeting, you know, some of the biggest artists in the world, mm -hmm. right? Immediately. And now all of a sudden, you know, we're at the BT Awards. Now all of a sudden he's, 
it's like, oh, there's Fat Joe, there's this person, there's that person. And he just like gets slapped into it and has to like navigate those waters. You immediately are thrown in with like some of the, I mean, literally the biggest street ball celebrities in the world. And y'all traveling the world, y'all traveling the USA. I've seen the documentary. If people haven't seen the N1 documentary, so you get yeah. kind of a little behind the scenes of some of these characters. Some of them dudes is wild. Yeah, they all wild. Yeah, they all <laughs> okay, wild. so yeah. they was all wild. <laughs> it was it was wild we, times. Yeah, yeah, it was wild. So <laughs> you come at like because you didn't grow up like wilding out and doing no, no crazy stuff like that, right? Nah, nah, so you all, getting man. exposed uh, to it, like good. dudes <laughs> coming straight from yeah. New York, yeah. Philly, DC, and you seeing a whole nother, you seeing a little gangster, you seeing drug, you seeing all kinds of crazy stuff. Like what is your, how are you processing that? It was like it was a little bit mixed emotions because part of me loved it. I'm like, okay. man, I'm living, I'm living a rap video. Like, yeah. you, you know, as a white kid in the suburbs, like hip hop. <laughs> Hip hop just hit the suburbs, right? There's a movie about it. It's called White Boys. You ever seen the movie yeah, White Boys? You seen it? I it's have. like Snoop's that in it. Crazy. Job, right? <laughs> no, so we joke around. I'm, I was like White Boy, not to that extreme, right? Yeah, that dude I know saying what you mean. the N word. That dude was wild. Yeah, he was wild. So we don't we don't but, want you wild on like that. But, but he was wild. But I was like an outcast, you know, like in yeah. the suburbs. Like I wore a sagging, you know. Okay. We had and ones, you know, like. So the game's over. They rolling dice on the bus and smoking weed, and yeah, you yeah. just like cool. <laughs> yeah, actually, real quiet though. Just, just like observing. Yeah, you know, figuring it out. I didn't okay. even know what I was supposed to do. So I, a lot of times, just sit on the. Did bus they treat you like relax? Like, you know, because usually what, what 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 typically happens is you, I won't say get hazed, but it's like it's like you're almost like a, it's almost like seeing the reaction of a naive kid, like where they're like, oh yeah, let's see if he'll, what's, what you gonna do? How's this gonna be like? Did you feel like you were like the puppet? Like, yeah, try this out. See what you think about that. Yeah, like they were clowning, you know, it was like fun for them. Cause it was also part of the show too. There was right. like that rookie hazing. So like okay. if you were, if they asked you to go on tour, like from your initial game, if you were nice enough, yeah, they asked you to go on tour, but rookie hazing was part of the plot. Okay. So like they loved it, right? They yeah. made us buy dolls and wear stupid stuff and yeah. run sprints and do push-ups at any moment, like in 7-Eleven. Like, yo, give me some push-ups right now just because they felt in like 7 -11, it. 7-Eleven, just hit and it. it was funny. Like yeah. you, you get why it's funny, right? But the funny thing is though, I was like, cool, I'm here. I don't care what you want me to do. Yeah. Let's get it. The only one I didn't like, they made me like carry this doll. Like there's one episode, they made me carry this big like doll. Yeah. And uh. I was embarrassed by was that. But for the most part, yeah, just real quiet. Okay. Taking in the culture, learning. Yeah. And but to be honest, everybody was actually cool. Like A, certain guys were different. Like AO and Headache, they was like rookie hazing really heavy, like loving it, like liking it too much. You know what I mean? Got you. And but then like Escalade and Hot Sauce were like more chill and just yeah. like cool. Were you ever scared where there's some moments to like, oh, shoot, this is getting real. Like, I'm, I'm outside yeah. of my culture zone, my context. A lot of it. I think, I think a lot, you know, sometimes, I don't know. It's hard to say. I think, like, certain environments have me a little, like. Shook. Yeah, yeah you know, a little <laughs> shook. And then, and also not knowing how to act, like, right? Yeah. Like, like, we play in a lot of arenas where there was no white people in the city, right? right. So, like, you know, you want to be cool. So, I'm like. What does that look I just like? Be, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, feeling imposter syndrome a little bit because it's For like, sure. yo, how do I, how am I supposed to navigate this space? And and yeah. you have at this point in time because this isn't even the new version of you. This is before you met the Lord, and you're still like, oh man, girls, I'm kicking it, I'm having my my time. I can imagine the imposter syndrome of like, yo, why am I here? Or what what is what is it about me? Like, and how do I navigate this? And how do I fit yeah. in? And street balls all about that, right? Yeah, street balls all about everybody's an imposter. Like every, my whole, and one was always like, the theme was like, are you like that? Mm. That That's, that's what street ball was. Like even getting out of it when it ended, I started doing YouTube. It was actually really refreshing because everything is, are you like that at practice? Are you like that? Oh, mm. well, we got this dude. You still like that? Every, that's like the, the mode. You always got to be ego. on. Yeah. Oh, every, even practice crazy. Like, we, we ain't a team. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. practice turned personal easy. Yeah. Training camp is personal. Not that we weren't also cool. It's, it's yeah, like yeah, mixed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but that was always hard, too. And I felt like the company didn't always have our back either, though. Like, we, mm -hmm. I go to the hood in Berry Farms, which is like the Rucker Park of DC. Yeah. And I'm playing. Why? I'm, I'm guarding 
the the legend from the area. Like, why yeah. am I to start the game? Mm. And there, and the guys are looking at it like, oh, throw them to the wolves, man. You know, you, you putting yeah. all that working against us. We'll Go see if it. you like that right here. And and I wasn't right. Like yeah. I scored like six points or four, po barely even got those. You know what I mean? And yeah. and that dude worked out, but just le learn a lot. What would you say? <laughs> you know? What would you say would be like? Because I, I I wanna I wanna get into a little bit of like, you know how you were nurtured in that space. But what what would you say would be like the low points while you were you know in that in that season and in that that place? Well, on well more you can have moral low points, right? Yeah, for a, sure, we, for we sure. were wilding, right? The for whole sure. thing. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine you had you had your pick in the litter. You were you a celebrity, so you could talk to any woman you want to. You can yeah. holler at whoever you want to, and you know, there's no fulfillment. I'm sure. Yeah, so like you have all that, right? Yeah. I had a girl, but you know, we do whatever we want. Yeah, so it's all that, but then also. It's interesting because being a celebrity, you get access to things other people don't. Like being the first to access this content. If you want to be the first to access content like this and not have to wait a week or who knows how long before you can see this content, then you should subscribe to B-Side where you will get the content immediately as soon as it drops and you won't have to wait at all. Basketball wise, it was actually hard though, because like mm. it was that whole thing. Are you like that, right? Even like playing on the N one team was way harder than playing against them. Yeah, against them, you're supposed to lose, right? It don't matter. Yeah, it's like you look like a fool. You're supposed to. That's why you came here. <laughs> but then when you're on the team, it's like all this pressure, and then like I'm trying to fit in with them. But then we're also we all competing for the shine. Mm. compete for touches actually an all-star game that's what people don't even know about and when they'd be like why don't you go to the league and not knowing like it's an all-star showcase so right. like there were some games i only touched the ball like five times or less yeah <laughs> you know it's so, like who's the star of this game and it's it's set up for stars yeah so i'm sure people get jealous because who's the new white kid coming in here and taking my shine you know what yeah I mean? and yeah. then every year there was only like Four dudes who were on the tour the entire time, and then everybody mm -hmm. else came in for like eight games. Some dudes come in for sixteen games. Yeah, some, some is half the tour. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I was as soon as I signed, I was on every stop. Yeah, and so that yeah, like naturally, is gonna be a little bit of friction or whatever. Because these dudes like they had real resumes, right? Like mm. sick with it is MVP of the Drew League. You, you know, played D one. I think Juco, two years, D1, two yep. years, right? Played yep. some semi-pro ball, but actually probably feels like should be in the NBA, which yeah, it wasn't unrealistic. Maybe, you know, whatever his setbacks were kept him from the league, but, like, just playing them? Yeah, like, it's <laughs> nice. Yeah. And he's not even who they're talking about the most, right? It's hot, hot sauce. sauce. Yep. Skip was already – he, like, played a few games with us. That was kind of, like, his farewell yeah. to Anwan one because he had to – the old school is different. He had to let go of his Anwan one image to make mm -hmm. the NBA. Yeah, because it was like bad. Yep. Yeah. So so a lot lot of lessons, but I think the low points were actually like playing dudes who were like overseas, like D one overseas players or guys who had played four years D one. Yeah. You know, losing the matchups night in night out in the arenas, like actually was hard. You know, like people. What's cool is like a lot of times people just remember your your high points. Yeah. But there was a lot of like on court low points too. It was like dang man, because I'm. Two years in, I'm like, should I have foregone my eligibility? And mm. or I got rid of my eligibility. Trying to figure out your identity in that whole process. That was my whole and one thing is trying to figure out identity. Yeah. How good am I actually? I don't even know. Like we yeah. did good on the thing. Was it a fluke? It was <laughs> and then I have a great game. Be like, nope, I'm supposed to be here. But then it's hard. To, it's like, dang, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think of, especially before I knew the Lord, right? Like all you got is your senses. When you don't have spirituality all you got is your senses you got like touch taste smell and you just live in for your senses and your worth and your value is connected to some aspect of that right like you know sex how many girls can i sleep with or how pretty is she or skill like how good am i compared to so and so and that's where your whole value and your worth is coming along and i'm imagining like you're going through this whole process you're young you're trying to find your identity I've heard you say a few times that Escalade was like your closest friend. My man Escalade was much older than you. Ten years older. Yeah. So how what's actually the, at his funeral we found out his true age. He actually lied about his age. <laughs> it was funny. Like he was even older than, than we passed, we thought he was 35, but he was 38. Wow. Because in college, he actually was insecure about being going to Louisville not as a freshman, because his bro is a superstar, right? Mark yeah. Jackson. Yeah. 
and Mark Jackson's whole sidebar because I want to talk about Escalade because like I, I'm the 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 dynamic between you Escalade is wild to me. Yeah. But like so Escalade's brothers Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson, a lot of people know as the commentator, but he was a super dope. NBA player. Hubert, yeah. Mark is the reason why me and Steph Curry became cool. Oh, you told me that. That's right. That's so, right. Yeah, yeah, Mark actually uh, had me do a devotional one time when um, the Warriors were playing the Timberwolves, matter of fact. Oh. And I came and was like, oh, I'll do it. I don't care. And um, that's the whole connection. But Escalade and Mark are brothers. Does Escalade, like, adopt you? Like, what made you get close to him in this whole season? That's a good question. I think Escalade was more personal than the other and one players. Like he could actually talk to anybody and get along with anybody and be friends with anybody. So, mm. and I think he was like a little bit wiser than some of the other guys. Okay. So he gave me a little advice. It started off as just like a little bit of advice. You know what I mean? I remember one time me and Hassel's had this battle, right? He came down. It's like a viral video today. Like he came down, did a like crossover. I touched earth, right? Yeah. Crowd goes crazy. I tried to block it, try to get to it, but it went in. Yeah. And then I got it back. I ain't know what to do though, because they ran on the court, right? So they, you know, floor run is like like we used to call it a floor run. Yeah. And one if it's a floor run, it's like it's, it's no, you a goner. Like I don't even know how to come back, right? <laughs> but I got the ball back and it was like I looked at the opposing coach. He's like a coach at Rucker, right? Go like, right back at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Plus is that? I'm like, what? <laughs> so now now instinct took over, right? Like was meant to be so i came down just blinked out i did any move i could think of like i'm doing hot sauce moves to him you know what i'm saying like i'm did the air walk boo, 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 boo. i don't even know what i did right yeah. and then i did i ended it with like sham god but it crossed him though like got him i go down for a layup i even got pushed i fell on the ground i ran into the back of the hoop but i guess it went in because they lost it or whatever it's crazy but then after that game escalate he was like yo bro he's like you gotta just like loot he, you gotta go crazy you gotta spaz out like you did that one play He's like, if you played like that permanently, he's like, you'd be a different player. He's like, you might go to the league if you, he said, if you play like that fearless and just blank out and go crazy, he's like, you'll be a different guy. So I remember that was like the first Piece tidbit of advice, of advice yeah. that he gave me. And then he actually, he, it's funny, Escalade was wild too, but not quite as wild as some of the other dudes. Yeah. So like, I wouldn't, right? So I wasn't wild at first. Right. So we would actually hang out though, but we were more chill, right? Like some dudes run around the club dancing, all you can't even keep up, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we might just get a section and, and chill out, mm -hmm. and then yeah, I don't know. It was like it was like big bro, little bro at okay. first, okay. like real little bro, but then later it was like peers. We we're more like friends, you know, yeah. like later. So what does that even look like? Yeah. Like Oregon. <laughs> Queens, New York, Jamaica, Queens. <laughs> like, what was the like seeing y'all? It's like Robin Big walking down the yeah, street. Yeah, people, like, people actually confuse us for Rob because at a glance, right? Just yeah, at a glance, like yeah. you might think, you know, Robin Big. If we go to All Star Weekend, they would always call us that. Yeah. We, we were actually trying to get a show because they oh, got a word. show, so we were actually trying to pitch that, but nobody, you know, we already had ESPN, so nobody was really thinking yeah. about it. But he liked to debate though, so okay. we debate. We would get into like hoop debates and like. He's all jokes, though. I think I, I probably laughed at his joke. I thought he was hilarious. Some of the other guys were, like, over it or whatever. Yeah. So we clicked on that comedy. But, yeah, yeah. I think if we were kicking, most time we joke, we're clowning. Like, you know what I'm saying? We're in the club. Like, yo, know, you know, Escalade, like the funniest dude ever. Like, he, he just clown anybody. Like, if he was in the room right now, he'd have us all dying about. Just, just, just we, We'd actually all be genuinely, like, cracking up. Like, dude's mad funny. So we'd be clowning. Or it'd be like, you know, who talks or advice yeah. or it'd be like he'd tell me something that mark said or i don't know so he he, he dropped gems did he ever drop like because i know he's a big his story is a big part of your spiritual conversion yeah did did he ever drop some gems on because i'm sure mark drops gems on escalade so i'm sure yeah, i'm wondering it would, it, no literally like now looking back at it well, I, I knew Mark in the N1 era, but we never really, like, spent real time together because he's he's in the league, right? Yeah. He's busy and, like, we cross pad, come to a game. It's, like, real quick. But then when I moved to L.A., I started playing this open run, and, like, Mark ran there. So, like, we got to run. I got to know him a little more. But then, like, after Escalade passed away, I got to know him even more. And I'm like, oh, he is Escalade. Like, this is where Escalade <laughs> got all swag, joke. He's a little fun. Escalade was a little funnier, I think. But, yeah. like, it was all real similar. Okay. And so, did he pass Jim? He did, though, actually. Like, yeah. it was funny, though. It was really, 
everyone was all fun and games and girl, fun games, girls, clubs, yeah, celebrity, this, that, you know, it's wild. Fa- wild. It was like life. super fast. We toured like six to eight months out of the year. Yeah. So it, it, no deep, not as much deep combos, yep. but as and when ends and we were trying to, um, we we're going starting this new tour. It's called Ball Up. Yep. I remember y'all had them jerseys. That was kind of lame to me, but y'all had the ball up jerseys. I remember seeing them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't My, disagree with you. Look, side, sidebar. Just no, but it was sidebar. you know yeah. we, they trying to pick up where and one left off, but yeah. we, we 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 you know it was done wrong. It should have been going this way. Yeah, this, anyway. that's a whole that's a whole another combo. There was some deeper moments yeah, after sorry. it ended. So yeah. he did tell me about. He actually told me about Christ, and I think so. I found out at his funeral he got saved. Right, we didn't actually know. We didn't know that. Yeah. And maybe he did tell me. I don't think so though. But you weren't paying attention, or maybe he maybe he was in a club. And I found was, out the like, music was loud. Looking <laughs> No, nah, it wasn't that moment. I found out like looking back, there was a lot of things people told me but that I missed. Like mm. he, even when the first episode of the An the An one ESPN show comes on. Yeah. The first episode comes on that I'm on. I don't know if I didn't get the memo or whatever, but the show was about everybody trying it like we were that was the, the plot the new plot right yeah. the first plot was here's the greatest street ball players in the world not an nba but now they're touring check out their life right mm. and it's and it's shutdowns and open runs and the hoods but it's also the arenas yeah so then this one i'm just thinking it's the same i'm like hopefully i one of my buckets is on there i can pause it call the homies tell them where to look yeah but like i'm watching i was watching we were like in jackson mississippi or something and i remember watching on espn and I was like the whole episode. I'm literally like the star of the show, like that that first one. And I remember cringing too because I'm like, why do I look like that? Why do I sound like that? <laughs> but I think that like looking back, they probably told me that, right? They probably said you're gonna be on there. But I'm just thinking like everybody's on there, like right. I'm guarding somebody, right? I got clowns the other day, you know. So he probably did, uh, you know, say escalate. Something. Yeah, more than that. I remember. He, I remember he did say. We had a salvation talk, and I was like, "What is what's that? That word salvation? Mm. What's that?" He's like, "Oh, you know, going to heaven, you know." And I was like, "Oh, well, how how's that achieved or yeah. something?" It was like quick though. We were always real. Everything was about being cool back in that era. So like, yeah, just, I mean, young kids are on that now too. But like, it was real. Like getting too serious for too long, we have to zoom out with a joke or something. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, it's, yeah. so it's, what 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 <laughs> were you like in the back of your mind? You got. You know, fast life, you young, you got all these stuff going, coming at you a million miles an hour. You do think about God. You do think about spiritual stuff. Like, actually, I you don't. didn't. Okay, so you're not at all uh-huh. until somebody brings. I can, I can kind of see Like in that, high though. school, I went to, actually, it's funny is me coming to faith was actually connecting the dots to my childhood a lot, though, because okay. I went to a Christian preschool. Yeah. Because my mom was raised in like a little bit of a Christian Catholic world a little bit right so they yeah. val- my parents valued the ethic code there right okay. even though they don't go to church right they yeah. not whatever so yeah because oregon is like the, the 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 bible belt not at all it's the opposite <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. no it's like the least church top least yeah, church yeah, states yeah. right one of the top so that's five that's kind of wild that god I found that grabbed out you out of the later. middle of that you yeah. know what i'm saying that's crazy yeah so i found that out later right but it made sense yeah. so uh yeah because church in oregon is like like a Christian church almost feels like a Catholic church a little yeah, bit. Not okay. as like ceremonial, but just real chill and for yeah. old people. And you, you know what I mean? I, that's what I thought church was for. When I was, I didn't, I didn't become a Christian until I was like 19. A lady mm. asked me. Oh, really? Okay. She said, uh, she, I went to church one Sunday. She said, are you saved? And I was like, what does that mean? Because I never heard that <laughs> language. I was like, what, what, what am I saved from? Yeah, Something chasing would, me? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. That's yeah. always exactly. Yeah. So so yeah, I thought about Christ in preschool because I go to the chapel, you know, little memories here and there. And yeah. then I transferred my junior year, I'm on JV. Yep. Right. So my whole come up, I'm never Which getting sucks. the opportunity I feel like I sh- should get. Yeah. And actually should have got, but it's like it's just not that style of basketball, right? right. It's the Hoosiers and high low and all. Yep. You know what I mean? So yep. <laughs> such a pick. Come on. Yeah, it was different. <laughs> yeah. But then again, you know, like you don't have the type of athletes, so like you gotta run True. systems to compete True. with the the better Y'all athletes. Jazz. And that's Y'all all my coaches know. The Spurs out there. It's all they know, right? Yeah. It's not even their fuzz. That's how they came up. Yeah, so I so I transfer my parents transferred me to a small Christian school my senior year. Okay. So once again, they got the the chapel, you know, the 
Ah, uh, so you yeah. had some seeds. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So, yeah. so it was more then. But I remember the most I really even thought about it then, even going to those. I was half asleep, right? Like I'm yeah. always staying up and thinking about basketball girls or something. So I'm like, you know, at the chapel, I'm like, this, yeah. you know, like tired. But I remember I had a Bible class, and I remember at the end of one of the classes, I asked my homie who was like raised Christian. He probably was Christian. He was like embarrassed to talk about. I was like, Jesus actually real? I was like, <laughs> I don't know why. Like I must have been listening. <laughs> like my whole run in school, I ain't listen to nothing. You know what I mean? Like literally. Yeah. Homework's due. I'm like, we had homework every time, you know, like. Yeah, you like you believe this stuff. I'm a I'm a I'm a two seven lifetime. I, I just only thought about hoops. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's funny, but I was tapped into this hour. This guy was talking about Jesus, and I was like, is this real? So I asked the dude, is it real? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, it's like Santa or it's real? I was like, <laughs> you, you, no. I asked him, and he goes, he was Christian. I think his face turned red. He's like, yeah, I think it's I think so. It's real. You know what I mean? Like, that was his response. You know, we young, right? So, yeah. you don't know, but that was it. I remember, like, I didn't think too much past that. Okay. You know, like, I almost looked at it as, like, an ethic code. Yeah, just rules to follow. Just It's, it's not uh, yeah. based on truth. I think, yeah. I mean, a lot of non-believers, right? I mean, I've yeah. had just conversations with a lot of people. So, so yeah, and then going to Anwan, living your hoop dream, right, the next year. Well, it was Juco. It was, like, you know, yeah, the hoop sucks. dreams dead. But yeah, then but the next year, one. the hoop dreams it's more lit than the, the so lead. In a sense, you you got your god. Yeah, in a way. So identity's all basketball, right? You mentioned yeah. it earlier. So that yeah. was one of the hard. I say, if you going back to you asking about low moments, yeah, you get outplayed, bro. It's your identity. Yep, yep. You your know what I mean? Is crushed. It's crushed, yep. and then you crush somebody else. You love it. You crush yep. their worth. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, <laughs> Like, I always had to wrestle bad, with that, you know? like rap battles. That's how I used to feel the same way. I get in a rap battle and it was like, yeah, I'm somebody until you meet somebody who's better than you. I know. And then it's like, dang, I'm nobody. So I know. I know exactly what you mean. I know. So like, yeah. So, so as far as though coming to, you know, all the way to after and and all that, like spiritual stuff, I started playing a church league. Shut up. See Ray. Right here. Wait, wait, wait. This is after N1? Yeah, so after N1. So you was at an all-time low if you went to the church league, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You had an all-time low. I didn't even think about that. My man just really want to hoop at this yeah. point in time. If you church league in it? Yeah, nah, so that's, I think that's, that's heavy. 2008 was the same year that N1 ended. I was in the CBA, which is like yeah. the G League back yeah. then. It's yeah. the G League with no marketing, right? Not to be confused with the Church Basketball Association. Yeah, so no, but check it out. This is how that happened, though. This is how it happened. So... That was my final crossroad of are we trying to make the league or not? Because the and one mm. ended, I'm only 24 turning 25. Yeah. People don't even know. Like, yeah. I was like, I'm young when it ends. You know yeah. what I mean? So I was still trying to chase that dream, but then I got the real picture. I'm going to get the real picture of what that actually looks like. 25, we're going to be a rookie in the league at 27. Right. <laughs> 5'10, 150. Ooh, rookie. Reality hits you. <laughs> It was tough. But, like, you know what's crazy, though? I actually got a measure, though. I outplayed dudes in the league in the CBA, though. And I'm like, I could do it. So yeah. I'm like, what you talking about? I had a re I was real fiery and chippy, you know? It was like a different version of myself back then, right? Yeah. I'm almost more disrespectful than respectful, like, just period. So it was a trip getting that measure, but then I saw the politics. I actually took the love of the, out game, of the game out of it. A lot of people don't know about the politics. The politics of the yeah. game, because you, you're like, I could do this, but like I don't get to show it. And then it's like, why not, though? Anyway, I stuck with N1, and then it ends the same year. <laughs> Which crushes you, obviously. Yeah. So where's your worth and identity after that? After yeah, this? so then it's, it's crazy because it ended fast. I remember we don't have social media. Right? I actually have it. I'm on MySpace and... Uh, Facebook at that time. I have a the fan page. MySpace. I got Kids, the, if you don't know what MySpace yeah. is, Google that. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, got, I got MySpace and Facebook. I got the fan pages. Yeah. So I actually started. I still got the same Facebook, Facebook page from back then, right? Okay. So I started it up, but like, you know how it is. It's not, nobody knows really what it is. And like, it's for the kids. It's for college kids. And then it's like, so if you lose your audience on the mainstream, you can't keep them like today, right? Yeah. Today, you can act, you know, independent artists and yeah. all that. You, you can figure it out. Be an influencer. You're good. So... I go to a UCLA game maybe a year after and one ends. Mm -hmm. Maybe not even. Maybe like eight months after. Didn't even get recognized, which blew my mind because I, I actually brought security. If I go to a college game, I'll bring security. Time out, bro. <laughs> you were that guy. So so I go. <laughs> you were that guy that showed up like, yeah, I'm, I'm him. 
And everyone was like, who's him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if it was that. But yeah, yeah, basically. I mean, yeah. I was just used to it, right? It used to get yeah. known all crazy. So somebody everywhere. runs up to you like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, excuse me, excuse me. And you're like, yo, yo, back up real quick. I'm not taking pictures. He's like, no, no, no. I need to use a bathroom. Do you know where the yeah, bathroom just, is yeah. type vibes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, literally one dude came up to me. Went to Dang. UCLA game. One person came up to me and he was like, hey, didn't you play on like uh, some tournament? Are you on TV or basketball or a tournament Dang. or something, right? And one was forgot about like that quick. That's crazy. That quick. And we're in LA, right? So like, and don't get me wrong, like some people recognize you here, sure, here and there, sure. but it's not the same when it's not, people ain't super excited about it and yeah. or whatever. And so- Were you depressed? Were you upset? Were you like, or oh, were man, you just like, it's whatever? Depressed. I think uh, when it first ended, I had a lot of leftover money. Okay. And then it like went fast. Yeah. And then- Cause I remember you said you was broke. You were selling Went jerseys. Broke. I sold my own like, jerseys. Like when we say broke, what are we talking like broke? Like we talking about ramen noodles? Bro? Like what are I know we talking what you're saying. about? Yeah. So so don't know how we're gonna pay rent. Okay. Next month. Yeah, I know what you mean. I didn't have a blanket. I'm not living at the park. <laughs> no, nah, no. Right? But I'm just wondering, like. But it could have been. That's my parents saying. wouldn't let me move back in. I called yeah. my parents and moved back in. Okay. Okay. Like, hey, what that's do you broke. what do you think? No, uh, it's not a good idea. Cause you know they, not in a bad way, but they they grew up like. Figure you got it to out. Hustle. Figure yeah, it out. Figure it out. In a good way. But you in LA broke. LA broke is a different kind of broke. Yeah. And I was still trying to floss, though. I had to still have my bends. So I like <laughs> all this stuff. But my man got no gas. No, you know what the funny thing is? <laughs> here's what's funny is. Yeah, literally though. But here's what's funny. I'm so immature yeah. that like the situation never it it hit me, but it didn't fully hit me. So like my jerseys were selling like hot fire, though. Cause remember. Outside of the U.S. and oh, one yeah. still, there's no social, uh, ne there's no social media. They don't know. They, it's connect. still going on as far as they're concerned. Nowadays, the world's way more on one page yeah. than we were as far as news and media and music. Yeah, and yeah, right? yeah, we're, yeah, like, yeah. You go to Australia, they heard what you just heard on the gram last week. Right. Back then, it's they a different didn't. planet. It's yep. like Star Wars. You go to a different yep. planet. They look different. They operate different. All yep. that. So... So overseas, I was still playing some games, and like okay. it, it, we go over there, it's just like oh five, it's going crazy. So, yeah. so, so you were selling jerseys overseas. So, so I sold them not everywhere though. Like okay. we, we we forty countries. It's so so like some people even bought them in my neighborhood, but they're going for like eight hundred to fifteen hundred. And was this? It's like a this like a <laughs> a fence to account or something. This ain't just like you. You know what's funny? The first one. The first one is myself. Like, Yo. I'm like, hey, man, we sell, we got to sell these. Hey, man, it's going to come from me. Somebody going to buy it just because I'm holding okay. it, right? So I, took, I remember I took a self, a sidekick. You know, it had the camera. Yikes. came up the camera. The look. flip joint. I yeah. had a sidekick, And though. look, we don't even have phone tripods and no cameras going this way. So I'm propped that joint. I'm like, how do I even do that joint? I yeah. pulled a muscle trying to take it. <laughs> so I took a selfie, but like, I'm holding a jersey. And then... uh. I listed one without it, and that one sold. I was like, okay, we're done with that. So then, okay. but it was funny. Like, someone on Instagram actually sent me that photo this year, and I was like, yo, this is scary. Oh, so was somebody buying that jersey? Yeah, I guess. I'm like, how you even got this photo? It was wild. So you were you scared, or were you just like, it's whatever? Like, because I, I know you was you was making ends yeah. meet, but, and at this point in time, wait, this is, this is before Escalade's funeral or after? Before. Okay, so you you just. This is like, yeah, this is like yourself. 2009. Okay. Escalade's funeral is 2011. 2011, so okay. So 2009, we, we, so partially it's scary, but then also I'm still a superstar overseas. Yeah. Got you. And then like, I know my ability. So like if I play, even if I go play pickup, it's still like a thing. Like Got a lot you. of people come watch. So like. It's mixed feeling, right? But then we don't have the rent, so it's like you're probably you got to hide that. It's like in L.A., right? A lot of people faking, a lot of people faking, faking it. Yeah. It. So, so we're on that. And then, but then, like I made like I made like thirty to fifty k though off the jerseys. Yeah, so it kind of lasts me a long. Yeah, yeah you was able to hustle for. A I good still minute. ate crab legs, like. <laughs> <laughs> but that's immature, right? Yeah. The budget I had is not crazy, right? Yeah, but yeah. like we, we still living wrong, so I'm blowing money still fast. Then it starts to get scary though. Come 2010. Okay. Things really slow down. Now I'm only playing a game every other month. Yeah. And then uh, don't got no more jerseys, you know. So this is God now, like kind of pruning you a little bit. Yeah, like now kinda, I'm like, do I need to be a trainer? Do Am I going to, wow. am, I, am I still, should I still try to play pro? It was one of that. But then I was like so grossed out by the CBA and all that. I was mm. just like, oh, I don't even want to, man. This is whack. Look, the church <laughs> league was like, it was actually a dude who was starting ball up. Okay. 
this dude named Demetrius, he was starting ball up. Yeah. So while we're getting ready to be superstars again, he says, hey, man, come run the church league. It's light, man. Just get some practice. You know, he tried to play it cool. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Give me some practice. Whatever. So I'm like, a church league? I mean, all right, I guess. So I did it because we're doing business. It's like our hang. Got you. So it's more like that. Got you. He <laughs> lured you in. But I loved it, though. Back yeah. then, like now, I don't play. Unless we're rolling for the thing, I'm not even playing. Yeah. Because, like, you, you get injured, now you can't do your yep. thing. So, but back then, just I'm, ready, life. I'm in the fourth quarter off the check. I'm ready to go. So, like, yeah. the church league, I'm like, cool. Who are we running over? You know, let's, let's get it. So, yeah, that's what that was. And then, you see, right, you know, right here, he yeah. invited me to church. And like I think I went just so you, you, my man, right here. You invited yeah. him to church. Yeah, as so I said, oh, mentor and okay, great friend. Ray. It's like family. Shout so, out to Ray. So it started there, and I think I even went. I'm just just being nice. So right? God's working on you behind yeah. the scenes. That's what a lot yeah. of people see. Because like when you when people hear your story, a lot of times they're like, "Oh yeah, Escalade funeral happened, and then I met the Lord." Yeah, but it's like way there's more some, to it. There's some, okay, yeah, yeah. Talk about like way what, more what's to happening. it. Think about it. We go into the church league to be cool and network, right? So there's yeah. that. See Ray, the captain of the team, you know, working with the church, right? So it's like it's outreach also, right? So he invites me to church. I just go like. I was I was growing to respect elders, right? So I'm like, I get, I'll go. I ain't participating, but I'll go. You know, what I'm okay. If you want, you know, so started going a little bit, and then there was a bunch of things in that time period escalating. I started having those convos. Yeah, I was inspired by other Christian athletes, or not inspired, but I kind of looked at, it, like, actually listened to it now. Yeah, met some other people away from street ball that were fun to work with. They were Christian. Yeah. Right. And then all the way up to like All Star Weekend in L. A. We're yeah. about to launch Ball Up, the second coming of Van One. Okay. So we're still doing like the celebrity thing, All Star Weekend. We trying to, yeah, go big and then escalate, pass away during All Star Weekend out here in L. A. Yo. And so then my world kind of halted, but it forced me to ask like bigger questions of yep. life, right, for the first time, really. See, that's what I yeah. I like, because a lot of people just think. When it comes to spiritual matter, I'm not saying God can do this. God can snap his fingers and all of a sudden you're like, oh, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? But yep. I like for people to understand like the process, the, process. the, the real process. Because getting someone like yeah. a person who's never heard of any of this or doesn't know what they believe in or subscribe to this and just getting, hey, let me tell you about Jesus. And then bam, they changed their whole life. Because now, now you're saying I'm going to commit to follow a person for the rest of my life from nothing. And I'm like. I also want people to feel a sense of like everyone plays a part. And so I, I think everyone's thinking they got to seal the deal. Like, ah, oh, did I convert them? And it's like, nah, did you play your part in the story? Like did you invite process. them to the church league? Yeah. Did you, you know what I mean? Just yeah. play your part in somebody's journey, somebody's story. Everyone always feels like, oh, we got to seal the deal. You know, oh, well. Like it's one and done? Or yeah. You stamp the paper? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes like people say that to me. It's like, yeah. or, or, you know, it's like, oh, you were hanging out with uh, J. Cole. Did you lead him to Jesus? And I'm like, yo, man, we all playing our part in the story, It's bro. immature, though, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that's. It's a lot, right? Some people stay immature for forever. Right? Facts. As a Christian, right? Because Facts. I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like you, it, and that's hard. You got that You got that Christian fan base. We were just talking about it on the oh way over gosh. here. In some ways, I'm thankful. I only have like a 10%, 15%, 20% you're, you're Christian fan base. You're fortunate. Yeah, and it's not like they're good because, they, you know, <laughs> keep you accountable on certain levels, right? But it's hard, right? Yeah. I'm glad I don't, ha I don't envy like your struggle. Right? I've followed your journey and how that's. It's just a lot, and then like, you get a lot. Just, of I was just chilling. I was just hanging out with my man. Like, what you want me to? You want me to? Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Did you read him the whole Bible, Genesis to Revelation? Yeah. Nah, we talked about the BT Awards. And then it's <laughs> like, what? And it's like, oh, you hang out with them, right? Oh, you, hang, oh, you right. rough around there. So, right, so right, now we gotta right. look at you. Crazy. But then it's like that. That's a hard thing with social media. I heard some people talking about on a different, on like a Vlad interview. Somebody was saying how. Social media now, it gave it's bad what they say. They're saying the dumb people, but but whatever, immature, yeah, dumb, thoughtless. It gives them a voice, right? So like now that's on you as a real thing, even though Facts. it's like it that's an immature viewpoint. And it's a snip snapshot yeah. of your world. Yeah, so it's like it's crazy. But it's crazy. Speaking of snapshots and social media world though, so I don't want to skip over. I mean, but to me, I'm I think it's dope. You had your spiritual transformation. And then it feels like new opportunity opened up for you. So yeah. I I know the story. I want to know some of the behind the yeah, scenes. Yeah, we didn't stuff. talk about it. Yeah. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like the 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 story of the new opportunity, like 
you know, the the story we get is you you and your man was talking, you put on a Spider-Man costume, you just out here hooping. And I was gonna bring you like a Spider Man doll or something just as a momentum. I'm, I'm gonna send it to you though, because that's it's, sure. it's funny. Yeah. But not even like Spider Man's your thing, but just because that's funny to me. Yeah, well, it's now, but yeah, not then. Yeah. But it pops off, but I'm like, yo, how, how, like, what, who is this person? What's the, like, how'd you go from that moment to this moment? What's that all connection look like? So when it goes to YouTube, 2009 we go broke that same time i'm doing the ebay i was yeah. always on digital more than like a lot of people in the early 2000s because okay. getting on and one and seeing how people react to the show i was kind of intrigued with marketing a little bit yeah. and then like i realized with the internet you could have a little bit of control over your own narrative whereas before with gatekeeping and all that yeah you couldn't it's just yep. you on the tv or you're not and yep. it's rough youtube's right? how i popped off too but yeah, yeah it, go that's ahead. right that's yeah. right so so I started in 2009, and then, like, a fan actually taught me how to edit. This dude, Alberto, this okay. dude in Alberto, he uploaded. He was, like, ripping the And One episodes, making his own compilations. He was real dope with the edits. Yeah. And he commented on one of my things, so I checked out his page. And then I realized if I want to put my content out there, you gotta edit I'm not it thinking up. about employing nobody, right? Yeah. I'm too immature-minded, yeah. you know, not never thought about budget allocation. What the, well, why did you want to... <laughs> Did you want to get paid off the videos? You just wanted some more clout? What Book, was the thought? It was actually bookings. Okay, to get bookings. Because I'm thinking old school. I'm thinking live. I mean, that's that was it. That's all there was, right? Yeah. I'm thinking live this show. Is, this is your calling card. Yeah, and yeah. I found out YouTube was in 10 countries at the time, I think. Okay. And so I'm like, oh, a couple uh, of the countries, the ones we went to. Because yeah. one only went to where they were at retail, even though we could have yeah. went everywhere. But yeah, so I'm like, a couple of these countries are where we go. I'm getting most, mostly international bookings. Yeah. Cool. So I learned to edit my own thing. I'm driving to San Diego, learned to edit from this kid. Mm -hmm. He's like a kid, but he's like, it was a beast. So he taught me Final Cut Pro. Which ain't easy to learn, by the way. Yeah, you got to just like make a project, so right? So you got a little nerd in you. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. But I didn't even know it at the time, okay, right? Yeah. I'm not, I never really thought it. Because like, you don't just jump on Final Cut Pro like, oh, thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Da, 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 da. Like, nah. That, no, I was always I into like computers and technology. Okay. And so learn to edit. I'm uploading vids. And uh, 2012 rolls around. Yeah. My homie Rob set free. You know him, right? Yeah. You know, you know yep. Rob. I know Rob. Rob Monroe. Yeah. Yep. Okay. He's all into tech, right? Okay. He's all full nerd, claims it, loves yep. it. You know what yep. I mean? <laughs> Fully in it. But also Christian, cool peoples, right? Yeah. Hanging out with him as opposed to hanging out with the street ball homies. It's like just yeah. refreshing. It's cool, right? Yeah. But we were sitting there and he was looking at like the top viral videos from 2011 and 2012. Okay. And so we're watching them and... He's just making suggestions. He's like, man, you, you never thought to went viral. He's looking at my channel. Probably got 30 videos. He's like, bro, one of this, somebody's got over half a million. You never thought to try to go viral? And I was just like, it ain't ESPN. So I'm like, ah, I'm just, it's whatever. I mean, So he, he put that seed out in the beginning. Yeah. Like, how can we go viral? How can we go viral? Wow. It's like big in credit to just dude, period. Wow. Taught me how to use a DSLR. But what happened was we tried to think of an idea that was like, I'm on spiritual steroids, right? We just came to Christ. Yeah. I'm that immature Christian now, right? I'm <laughs> what I don't even know what it means. It's just like we ain't got time for nothing but God. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we're like, how can we do one that honors God? You know, we're thinking it real. Yeah. Spider-Man. That what honors it, God. What it, yeah, whatever, right? So but no, but but a lot of stuff that went viral was like World Star or was Ratchet. Oh, or you say, okay, I got Shaq you. was dancing in a diaper. I remember, remember it's like 2011. <laughs> a lot of just stupid stuff. You know what I mean? It was like, how do you go viral and be cool or make an honoring or whatever? I got you. I got you. And he was like, bro, you know what it'd be crazy? And he's he's all into Comic Con. He goes to Comic Con, yeah. right? So like that's his world, but I don't even know what that is. Yeah. You know, I'm just like anybody. The Spider-Man the movie come out and we'll go yeah, see it in the go theater. Out. That's where it ends, right? Yeah. Batman and Spider Man, whatever. And we're coming from the cool era, right? Yeah. And one, think right. about it. Doing something like that, like 10 years prior, it's crazy. You get clown. I don't even know if it works, right? Because it's a whole different mind frame of everybody. Yeah. Maybe it does. I don't know. But nah, it wouldn't work. I don't think so. Nah. But I think, like, as the 2000s progressed, it was like you freer. You could nerd, do more. nerd, skaters, yep. hip hop and basketball Kanye, all started to. Drake. Yeah. It, it, Pharrell. Pharrell was a nerd, right? Yep, all it of all that. started to like merge. Yep. And then somehow Comic Con became a normal mainstay. Yep. But I think like that vid low key like launched cosplay like online. Yeah. I started seeing everything after that. So anyway, he was like, bro. 
You should dress as, he's like, you know what would be funny, man? He's like, you dress as a superhero, mm -hmm. bro, and you go play a bunch of people one-on-one. -on -one. It's like a prank. It's like a prank. We don't even take the thing off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You go, like, whatever. So, I and was that like, joint goes crazy Yeah, viral. and he said I actually liked it. I was like, bro, it's actually super funny, like just something stupid. I'm like, I don't know how good it'll do because I'm, I'm only thinking people react to All I know is and one mixtape, right? The highlights go crazy, right? Yeah. The more you embarrass, the more you saw something, the more the crowd goes crazy, the better it is. Nah, Spider-Man hitting trick shots is, is win. So, yeah, so basically I order once this is how you know it's meant to be like most of the party city back in that day it only ran xl and 2x and because they want you to be silly they don't want a replica of the movie because it's like bad for business yeah this before before replicas and all that right yeah but i found one it was like in the uk on the whole internet i found one that's a size medium so i'm like all right screw it maybe it's one right we find it it fits me perfect it's like made for me right yeah it's crazy call my homie ron bro this joint made for me we can do it tomorrow let's get it why not be fun. Be stupid. Let's go. It's like all silliness. Yeah. And then uh, we go out there. I just play dudes for 20 minutes. I play one on one about it. But I also like didn't miss a shot. Yeah. Every move worked. Not that the comp was crazy, but just the fact that like it was just all. I don't even know if I missed together. a shot. Like literally, yeah, I'm editing that joint. Yeah. And then I edited it for like three or four hours. I had a flight early morning. I uploaded it. This is before like compressing video. I don't even know what that is. So yep. I woke up the next day. It says uploading six more hours. I'm like six more hours. Forget it, man. So I, I was already broke. I left my computer on all weekend. I was like, you got to upload at some point. It breaks. Sheesh. I don't care. I already live in a ghetto apartment. So whatever. <laughs> and then uh, somehow it uploaded, though. By the time I got to LAX, I left the house, got to LAX, already had 100K views. But we, this one, we got the email notifications. So I'd look at my email. Said, How are people finding it? It was, it was one of them just golden vids. Like. But that's what I'm saying. Like, when you, you just <laughs> uploaded it, I'm like, the algorithm, God blessed your algorithm initially. Facts. Because I'm just like, yo, people just I did everything this. right, though. Like, look, the, the thumbnail was fire, though. Okay, like, okay, and then okay. It, I, I even put, like, a little comic. I found a little comic PNG. This yeah. is, like, I barely knew what a PNG was. It was okay. Like part one. Okay. Spider-Man basketball. It's just intriguing, right? It was Spider-Man like this. About to cross my out of Nike basketball. You see the swoosh? So it was like, it was before we ever did dress up like the nerd, but hip hop, you know, urbanize it. But yeah, so, so look, I get to LAX, check the email notification, said 100K. I remember I'm tired, right? Barely got any rest. I'm like, 100K? I was like, wait, what? So yeah. I open it, 100K. I go to the YouTube. I'm like, there's no way it's an error. So look, 150K on the refresh. That email came a few Yo. minutes ago, right? Bro, I'm refreshing it as I'm walking to the gate. 175k 200k like literally i'm like what yo i text rob like yo you seeing this bro look at this my man <laughs> you couldn't said even, you want to go even, viral you couldn't even send the link back in the day right that wasn't yo, you couldn't send that video i was like bro crazy. go go on the channel and go to the video <laughs> that's so anyway, crazy by the time i get to chicago it's a mill or a little over a mill by the time i get to the hotel it's two <laughs> this joint crate bro in, in I got, 2011 20 10? Bro. What is 2011? It was 2013. 2013. Bro. Okay, so even 2013, two mil is crazy. Yeah, yeah. And like the algorithm is more friendly now. If you have a true viral vid, like I had a couple that did like 16 mil on the week, right? But yeah. back then, the, the algorithm wasn't even good enough. Like it, it, it didn't have that. That's what I'm saying. How was people finding so bro, this? Check is... this out. No lie. Fact. Walk, got to Chicago, got to the hotel. That's where the ball up game is, right? Yeah. Walk in the room. Broop. CNN, hit the vid. <laughs> See, no, no lie. CNN, the vid. Look, check this out. You, you won't laugh. Broop. Good morning, the vid. They're talking about it here. It's, it's like it's like a superhero movie, right? You just watch himself do the thing. <laughs> it was funny. And then literally in Chicago, <laughs> some people was like, "Yo, you Spider Man." They like, "Yo, <laughs> this is the guy, this is the bro, that vid." And then my team, it's the topic. So. I was experiencing that's, yeah, that's, viral. Ahead. I was experiencing it. Yeah. And then, like, I always say it was like a it was like a mill and maybe a week or something like that. Maybe yeah. a mill in a day sounds good for the story, but whatever works. But whatever it was, like 800 k in a day, though. Like, like literally 800 k subs in a day. And the vid on the week, I think it was six mil on the week. But that back then, that was like literally it's probably like 20 mil on the week or something. Why do you think? Obviously, God, obviously. But why do you think you landed on your feet in the way you did? Because there's a lot of people from yeah. and one, but I think because you're white. 
Well, I'm just, I'm, depends I'm, who you <laughs> ask. <laughs> I'm messing with you, hey, bro. Man. Nah, but why do you hey, sincerely like some of the haters? My, <laughs> that might be eh, you find a lot of opinions from the haters, but no, I think. Uh, well, listen, being white always helps, right? It, it's funny, you like said that. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you it's a fact, that. though, right? I mean, you said that it, it's a fact, right? I yeah. mean. It's, it's, it's a fact. I think that white people in America, obviously, if there's more eyes, there's more yeah. power, more opportunity for sure. Of course, right? It's the Eminem effect. My whole yeah. life is like, you the Eminem about yeah. this my whole life. So, so yeah, it helped. It, it made it hard, but it's also helped, right? For it's sure. like, it's always like cuts both ways. I mean, do you think having two parent home? I think, like, I think what do you so. think helped? Uh, Cause you landed on your feet. You didn't land on you. You landed. You you landed and took off. Well, yeah. Well, first we face planted. But true, <laughs> you know true. First we face planted, that's skidded true. out, and then actually that style of basketball we were talking about a little when I walked in, right? Yeah. Iverson's crossover became a carry. They trying to like you said take the ghetto ness, take the hip hop out, out, out of NBA the culture. Yep. Yeah, they tried to take. I mean, yeah, yeah, they tried because they were, scared of, NBA was they were be actually good. scared of hip hop, right? Yep. They're yep. scared of the hip hop, urban black it's culture. Be gangster they're scared of in the NBA. Yeah, the they're like, wait, shorts what you go, talking about? Wear the suit went to the games. Yeah, but all then of that. so 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 that becomes the care the Iverson thing. They're trying to take the juice out of Iverson, right? Yeah, and one ends the trends just flipped, right? It's like even. The Spider-Man went hand in hand with the changing of the time, right? Because mm. it was like now the nerds are on top. We don't know what to think. The skaters is going crazy. Yeah. But this Comic Con culture was just heating up. Right now it's a tour. There's a Comic Con every three days in a different city. Like Facts. it's insane, right? Yeah. So so I think that uh for me, being tapped into digital. Okay. Being younger, ah. being tapped into digital and not scared to brand myself. But but I actually brand myself because it was like even that was uncool, right? We used to have yeah. the machine behind us. We yeah. got the, we don't have the manager. I ain't got the agent. Mm. They all let us. They fired us. It was even bad too. You don't even know. I had a lead role in a movie out here. They shelved it. The agent let me. The acting agent let me go. The Dang. manager let me go. Even even I cut you ties. You was gonna be Jack Harlow and White Men Can't Jump type vibes. Yeah, so I c depending on who you. Yeah, they said I was <laughs> supposed to be it because I was like I'm real. I'm White Man Can't you Jump in real, real life. Deal. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Yeah, so 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 I think being tapped into digital was big. Okay, always being tapped into kind of like like Rob, who's like we, he was younger at that time, but more yeah. trendy, more yeah. in touch with how the people think. Hanging around a different crowd, like you not had access, not hanging with the street ball crowd was yeah. great because that was all ego and are you like that and like <laughs> zooming out, like we were so concerned with stuff that made no sense. Yeah, we were always trying to be the best, and it was like, bro, they just want to see an ankle breaker. Like you, yeah. like it, it's both, right? You want that respect of being an elite hooper because they branded us as like the best players not in the NBA. But it was, it was actually true though. Like it's that's all, the crazy part. That, yeah. The crazy part is even us there, we would say we weren't. Like some dudes had imposter syndrome while we're there. Like I remember the combos, like, yeah, you know, bullshit, you know what I'm saying? But hot sauce can't play real ball, you know what I'm saying? It's like <laughs> It's, you know, we ain't real hooper. You say, I'm the third. It's a lot of dudes is like, you know, think they're the most thorough hooper of all time. And right. like maybe they live up, but nobody else does. But honestly, the whole group was special. Like, it's crazy. Like, literally the most exciting basketball outside the NBA. No, nah, facts. I'm ready to say ever. I was a big fan. Did I'm you, ready to say ever. Did you, yeah. did people, because I, I think about Hot Sauce, right? I think about, like, he was, he was that dude. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'm wondering, like, and you don't have to say no names, but did yeah. people would come to you afterward, like after you had established yourself as a YouTuber, so on and so forth, and say, yo, yo, help me get my stuff popping? Like, did they ask you for advice, or was it, like, too much ego, too much pride? <sighs> we, we still beefing today. Dang! Dang! Like, first time I ever said it. Dang! But it's one-sided. I had yeah, none but yeah. love. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And not everybody. Right. Well, four guys or whatever. About, right. about four dudes. Yeah. But that's that's like that's like music groups, man. It's like it's always some internal beef, some internal Bro. issue. Like it's the money, it's the you I got spoke the... to Hot Sauce twenty ten. That's crazy. Seen him. Africa. We had an and one game in Africa. That's crazy. Got, nobody nobody reached out because I think like they were done hooping. So they yeah. were looking at what I did as a hoop grind, not knowing it's actually a marketing grind. Right. Who knows? I seen uh, Shane. One of them was on a podcast. Like, dude, never shared the secrets. You know, he don't know the culture. You know, what I'm, I'm like, 
what? You, you're yeah. the enemy. <laughs> yeah. What you mean? Remember, I told him that. I was like, bro, you, y'all's bullies. Like, what you, <laughs> like, because because they hit me. The narrative changed. I noticed a lot of times with beasts or weird stuff. Yeah. You get twenty years out, the narrative always changes, yeah. right? So the narrative was, I was too Hollywood to call to call nobody when we go to New York. I'm like, oh wait, I was supposed to call y'all. You don't even like me. Yeah. <laughs> Call y'all. I don't even want y'all number. I'm scared of y'all. Right. And then he was like, how you? How dare you gonna say you scared? I'm like, all right, you just, you're not getting it. Okay. Like, you know, he not getting how things came across. Because when everyone got bought out, we actually broke up. This is the whole thing. This is where the, a lot of detention started. We, yeah. we broke up into two units. It was going to get sold. Somebody at the company brought us in a room after a Japanese tour and told us, hey, the company's about to get bought out. They want to go a different route. Yeah. They're not going to do the tour. It's over for y'all. Don't worry. Sign with me. We'll get the sponsorship. We'll get the show. We'll keep it going. Little did we know that person's job was in jeopardy. So they trying to make a play. And maybe that's what they were told. I don't want to point no fingers because yeah, sure. I don't even know. It's we yeah, we yeah. we talent. We we not even out of the, the money combos. That's for the, the oh, suits the, and the white people, right? Yeah. So who probably made hundreds of millions of dollars. But yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. Well, it was an undisclosed amount. It oh, couldn't have been yeah. small, right? We, we yeah, that's just true. Disclose that's true. it. A humble exit, right? Players can't complain. That's true. The humble, but you know, that's true. <laughs> so undisclosed. What was it? Four hundred. Y'all profited. It was on record. You made three hundred in the year. So it was it? What was it? I don't know. You know, we we have seen you know kind of the origins. We've seen the fall. Yep. We've seen like. You know, God kind of intervened, transform super, your super, yeah, not kind of, but I know what you mean. Intervene, yeah. transform your whole situation to where you are to this day. I am curious, just in light of everything, like two questions. Question one is, what do you think the biggest takeaway from your journey is for you now? Like, what do you if if you yeah. had to like yeah. say, man, this is what I've learned today that I'm like, man, I see what the bigger lesson, the bigger picture was for me. Man, so many takeaways. What's, yeah, I mean, what's, what's one of them. the takeaway? Yeah, because obviously it's never just one thing. Yeah, I was but, it, but, say. It, but it's But it, if there's, sometimes we look back and we're like, man, that was messed up how this happened. Like, you know, we look back on our life and we're like, I wish this wouldn't happen. I wish this wouldn't happen. But yeah, every loss doesn't have to be a loss. It can be a lesson if you keep moving forward. I know. Oh, man. There's so, so many the, takeaways, but two stick out to me, okay, give me that, that I've just been thinking about recently. Okay, yeah. this probably don't summarize the whole thing. Yeah, but I do think even as we talk, like having mentorship is huge, just with all in life. Period. Right. Okay. So spiritual or whatever. Yeah, yeah you need. Those. But even like as we talked about basketball, if I met my homie Mike Pemberthy, he's like player development coach, the Laker, you know, yeah. assistant coach. Like if I met him in high school, probably in the league. Or, or at least would have gave it a nice run. I had got to know how good I am. We could have okay. went to the right school. We could have okay. went to the right college. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's big. But also, sometimes, like, even, even this journey is good as some people would be like, bro, you an icon. You went to the moon. It's, it's yeah. whatever. It's like, we still, and DZ knows, we always try, still trying to go to new levels. I'm okay. always like, man, but, but the next, though. The yeah. next, you know? But then Will Smith was actually talking about it in his own universe way whatever you know what i'm saying <laughs> well no i didn't agree with the but 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 he made a great point i know what you're saying he yeah, made a yeah. great point in his own la way and it actually hit me like it kind of was like dang and i've talked to my homie air right here about a lot but like the way he said it was you think you need to like go to new levels when it comes to like career wise mm -hmm. but actually like that next level ain't even gonna be what you think it like you're living it now it's mm. great so I, I look at my journey now i even thought about it because i watched that interview just a couple days ago yeah and i was just at venice earlier that day yeah i collab with some young tiktoker like this football game through overtime or whatever it was something yeah. we were doing in the venice courts and like there's 300 people waiting to take a selfie, just standing at the court, watching us do me explain my moves. Yeah. To the dude, and I was like, but I'm always like, we always talk like, we trying to go. What are we doing next? next. We need that mainstream. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. trying to go. So like, the lesson was there, like to enjoy, be more present, and kind of like enjoy Where the process are. as you go. And I think yeah. there's a lot because if I would have been in that mindset, and I don't even know if I could have absorbed it. Yeah. Back then, but like. Even through and one was great, but even like 
starting YouTube. That was awesome, you know. But I'm always one weakness of me, even spiritually, you get too caught up in like the grind and the busyness. Yeah. But we gotta, man, screw that, man. We trying to go crazy, man. We going to outer space, you know? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. you can kind, of, you know that, right? Yeah, Probably. Not, I'm, not being I'm content assuming. sometimes. It's like, all right, where, where can? Because it don't take much to find joy and happiness right it don't sometimes it's like yo i woke up i had a i had a good coffee good breakfast i went to the beach i'm with some people i enjoy this was a great day and you don't appreciate that it's a great that's great today i love today yeah you know what i mean like yeah, yeah like sometimes you don't exactly you don't appreciate and you that. you got wife and fa you know family like yeah, i ain't yeah, got yeah. none so i can get yeah. fully consumed like oh, we have no time to myself that's just true on the grind, cause we, cause we, hey, look, you got time. This is what we put in to get to here. We'll put it again. We're gonna go over there. It's gonna yeah. be great. But like, it's a lot. Like I at that shoot at Venice, the the dude I'm collabing with, he's like, bro, you like Michael Jackson? He's like, bro, I, I didn't know how famous you, you know, like, and I was yeah. like, well, I mean, who you comparing? To? What's your scale? But I was like, yeah. like that's I thought I didn't say that, but I'm like, hey. I feel that. I was like. I feel that. Hey, humble, bro. He's, that's great. I mean, yeah, you forget. Yeah. You know, you out here hustling. <laughs> so my second question for you in light of everything as well is like, you kind of answered it in a sense, but mm -hmm. today, what's your why? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what's the driving force behind what yeah, you Yeah, I'm always constantly, like, I think as you go, you got to, like, recenter spiritually mm -hmm. along the way. Like, keep keep recenter. It's like really yeah. every day, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. But, you know, my weakness is you get caught up in the grind. It's like, oh, yeah, remember we're just – because, like, I always say, like, like my main thing is to inspire and impact people. It could be for faith, right? It could yeah. be for Christ, which yeah. obviously is the main center point, for right? Sure. But but it also could be – a lot of people, like, I met a handicapped dude. He's like, bro, I watch your videos every – it's crazy. Like, you yeah, inspire that's, that's me. For the He's Lord. like, I draw. So, like, yeah. you inspire, you know, whatever. Or, I mean, dudes, like, he yeah, had cancer, man. I was watching your vids, bro. Yeah. It's, so, so it can be inspiration for that. And then it's just yeah. sheer, like, entertainment, right? Because I know even to cool out at night, I might watch Batman or Avatar cartoons yeah. and, like – cool out and that's fun too so yeah. so i think like the shuffle of how to go to the next level can get in the way and i always have to like like recenter. spiritually recenter it's like remember this is to inspire and impact it's yeah. actually happening now your bills and all that taxes can get crazy but like you're not taking that with you to heaven so or, right you, you know like see what what i love about what yeah. you're saying though is because i was i was telling to my guy andy minio similar i said we went to a prison and i said I said, man, don't feel pressure to like, you know, over spiritualize this moment with these people. Like some people just need to forget they're locked up today. And that's enough. For you sure, I mean? bro. Some I did a vid at a prison. That, yeah. that, and I learned I actually learned that in the process. You yeah. probably already knew it going yeah. in. You might, oh, you did the prison fellowship too. Yeah, that's my they're my peoples. Bro. So I was glad you went. You yeah, yeah it, I was like, you went either you went. before or after or whatever. It was close by. Yeah. It was close I went and hooped with them too, but not not like what y'all oh, did. Okay. <laughs> it was but, after. You know what I'm saying? I went and hooped with them too. I was a little on a like I was like Bro, we should have did it together. That would have been fire, bro. Getting the yeah. hoops now to your concert. But let me learn, let me work on my J and then I'll go back with you because I like I said, I'm a slasher. I make you look right. Though, I'm bro. too old. That's true. No, bro. It's don't okay. even worry about it, bro. You just we, have me look, you know bro. You, it's gonna be crazy. Just uh, but yeah, yeah. Like I learned that in process too, right? I think you made a good point. To Andy. Yeah. sometimes it's they like they just forgot they were locked up. Yep. They, they forgot their life. Had a super fun, and it yep. was like that was ministering to them. Not, not I told my story too, but yeah. it was like. A special moment and i think even the humanity and just like treating them as equal facts is great because if facts. we if we look at all the crimes on paper you, i might even been like you know. <laughs> <laughs> no because dudes actually yeah. were murdered like we went to a, yeah. a maximum security right you think you the same thing right yeah. so yeah it was just a trip but i feel you on that but nah man i i, I just want to say like it's been dope to watch from afar to see a journey to see you know, you navigating spaces to see your resilience and to see your transparency. And um, for me, it's like, I think, you know, you you have really been influential in multiple generations, different iterations of time in different ways. 
And I think that's a blessing. I think it's super. I think it's bigger than, you know, you're like, oh, well, you know, obviously I want to like spiritually impact people. But I think you are because like you said, ministry is where your feet are. Ministry just means serving people. You serving people. I mean, you sometimes you be serving people low. low <laughs> but it's easy to be hard on yourself, though, right? Yeah. I know what you're saying, too, because yeah. like I feel like people be like, bro, you go hard for the face. Sometimes I'll be like, man, I'm like mid tier. I got to step in. Nah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, thank nah. you, but I don't even. You now nah, you serving people. I know what you mean. <laughs> it's a generation of kids who, you know, my kids watch your content and it's dope because for them, it's sometimes you just want them to to get something that's helpful, that's not just going to poison their mind. You know what I'm saying? And you provide opportunities for people. People don't even know that behind the scenes. Like you, you create new opportunities for different people, man. So I appreciate you, bro. I'm humble, grateful. man. Super yeah, humble. Man. You know, I'm a yeah. fan. We didn't even talk about. We didn't talk enough about Cray yeah, we, on this. Like, I'm a fan. You know oh, what I'm saying? Man, you, the you homies know, by, are the fans. By all means, go so, ahead. I'll so, sit back. Look what yeah. you want to say, man. What yeah. you want to say, nah, man? real talk. <laughs> just, just honestly, bro. Nah, I saw that. Honored, honored to come on here and chop yeah. it up with you. You know, the, when I saw you, what was that, a year ago or something? Yeah. At the, at the church. That was crazy. I was like, yeah. oh, that's fire. Because, like, Did I, miss I always feel shots? like you were I think in I missed my jump shot. such a different... We don't, yeah, we play like one percent. I was like, bro, I had warm up 30 minutes. So you you <laughs> wanted me right. to go crazy. I'm like, bro, I got hat and sweats on. Yeah, 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 my bad. But no, uh, yeah, it's funny because uh, you're in such a different world. Like, we're, yeah. we're in the Christian world, but like, I feel like I haven't done mainstream Christianity media. So, like, I'm not, I, my audience ain't even, it's yeah. like 10, 15 percent, yep. right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I like to sit, come. It's like an honor. It's dope. I didn't think we'd ever mix it up on this level. I, I yeah. thought our passing by, like, oh, was sick. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. appreciate you, man. Nah, Thanks for having man, me on. It's all love, man. Yeah. And I just want to just warn you now. You know, it's gonna be some people in the comments that's that's gonna tell you. You know, you need to love God more, and just you know, just keep 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 doing you. Sure, Keep man. Keep doing you. You hey, know what I'm saying? Appreciate just it, bro. Tell them they don't want to see me on the court, though. Tell them that. Okay? Oh, yeah. That's how you respond. That's a fact, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's love, bro. Yeah, appreciate you, man. Yes, sir.